Hey guys, welcome to Jun's Mini Garage. In this video, I will be building this 1 to 24 scale Nissan S15 Sylvia. Let's get started. After finishing Takumi's initial DAE86, I've decided to take it easy for the next build and just start a quick little project that doesn't require a lot of work, preferably a kit that does not require any painting. Fortunately, Aoshima has exactly what I want, a pre-painted version of the Nissan S15 Sylvia. If you buy this kit, you shouldn't have to do any additional painting. You will only need a few hand tools to put this together. Let's open the box and see what's inside. Aoshima does a great job with the packaging. Unlike the unpainted kit, the parts are carefully protected. The sprue is individually wrapped. I can tell even the plastic wraps are higher quality than the regular ones. It's not a race car, so not many decals to worry about. I don't think they sell any pre-painted race cars though. Here are the pink coats in case you want to do some touch-ups. The instruction manual is only a few pages long and is very beginner friendly. Since there isn't a lot of part, you can simply follow the step-by-step -step guide. Even if you have never built a model car before, it should only take a few hours to complete. There's no engine which is kind of a shame. I don't think this pre-painted kit ever come with engines. Why don't they put engines in these cars? Is it really hard to do? Now let's unpack it. Whenever I see bubble wraps, I have to pop them. It's like an addiction. Oh yeah, I feel much better. Okay, let's take a closer look at the part. I am impressed by how precisely these parts were painted, like these headlights right here. It would be quite a challenge to get it to look this clean. The interior trims are painted beautifully, even the edges of these vents have been painted perfectly. Suspension parts are painted in flat black. It doesn't feel like paint though. I don't know, maybe it's just molded in black. You're not gonna see them most of the time anyway. The inside of the window edges has also been perfectly painted. Imagine if they do this to all of their models. That will be so sweet. It will just save you so much time. Okay, here's the sprue that contains all the body panels. Both front and rear bumpers look really clean. However, I do see some dust specks on the hood, which is understandable given the fact that these were probably painted by a machine. There are some injection marks on the other side of the hood and the rear spoiler. Springs are metal and movable. The rubber tires have proper thread patterns and markings on the sidewall. Okay, the moment of truth. The paint job looks nice. It's very smooth and glossy. I don't see any serious orange peels either. The turn signal is properly masked and painted, as well as all of the window trim moldings. These window trims are such a pain to mask, so I'm glad I don't have to do that. However, there is a mold line on the C pillar. I don't know if you can see it, it's quite visible. That is a little disappointing. If this is an unpainted kit, I will definitely clean all of those flaws before painting. But since it's a pre-painted kit, I'm not gonna bother. Mm. 
Now it's time to remove the pot from the sprue. To do that, I use a pair of side cutters. This basic one only cost me $5, and I've been using it since I started building model kits. It's useful for cutting thicker plastics, but for this painted kit, I'll be using these plastic cutters from Tambia. It's got sharper and thinner blades than the basic one, which will cause less damage to the plastic pot, and the cuts are cleaner. Since it's not a snap kit, you will have to glue the parts together. These are some of the common modeling glues available on the market. The one with the orange cap is thicker than the one with the green cap, but the thinner cement has a shorter drying time. They are usually applied through an included brush. The plastic cement works by melting the plastic. Once the glue is dried, the plastic is fused to each other. With that said, it's recommended to be applied before painting, because if you're not careful, you can easily remove the paint with this type of glue. Keep in mind that this glue smells pretty strong, so if you're planning to use them continuously, be sure to wear a mask or respirator unless you want to feel the world spinning. I like to glue the parts after I paint them. I use this BSI Super Gold Plus almost exclusively. This is a CA glue or super glue, but it's different from the ordinary household super glue, which I don't recommend using on plastic models, especially on clear parts as it will turn frosty once it's dried. You can use craft glue like this Elmer's clear glue. It's safe to use on all parts. It has no smell, but it takes a long time to dry. And the bond is not as strong as the super glue or the plastic cement. To apply the glue, I squeeze a few drops onto a piece of masking tape. I then use a toothpick to transfer a small amount of glue onto the pot. To lower the right height of the car, I simply place a poly cap under the suspension. This will basically compress the spring.
These spec R size skirts are optional. Should I put them on the car? Hmm, meh. It took me a while to attach these three pieces onto the back of the spoiler, but the gap is too big, I couldn't get it to sit flat on the trunk. So what do you think about this kit? Or what do you think of this type of kits? I personally like them a lot. I like how everything is painted. I like how I could just open a box and start putting it together right away. I don't have to worry about sanding, painting, polishing for roughly the same price of an unpainted kit. You have a car that is beautifully painted. Yes, this one has some flaws like the mold lines and some dust specks in the paint. This one is not perfect but I'm happy because it's built. It's now a finished kit that will be displayed on the shelf. Unlike most of my other unbuilt and unpainted kit, who knows how much longer they're gonna stay in a box. If you could find this kit, don't hesitate to get them. I'm sure you'll like them as much as I do. I wish they can produce more of this. These model cars shouldn't be so rare and hard to find. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't. Please enjoy the photo presentation. I will see you guys in my next video.